Welcome to Stitchery Stories, where textile artists share their life in fabric and thread. Inspiration, techniques, disasters and delights. And I'm Susan Weeks, enthusiastic embroiderer and textile arts dabbler who also loves podcasting. So take a break and enjoy our light-hearted chat and please share with your friends so they can enjoy it too. Hello and welcome today to our lovely guest, Carol Ann Allen. Hi Carol Ann. Hi Susan. Brilliant speaking to you today. We've had a few hiccups and everybody, if I'm sound if I'm shouting, it's because it's raining really badly in my <laughs> conservatory office. I am not the BBC. I don't have a soundproof studio. So if you can hear the rain, well, I'm sorry I can't do anything about the rain today. I'll do my best. Right then, so lovely to speak to Carol Ann today. And if any of you have listened to the couple of episodes that I've just released where we were at the Podcast Social Club live in Thursk. That was an adventure, wasn't it, Caroline? It certainly was. <laughs> <laughs> and an enjoyable one then, nonetheless. So um, don't think, oh, this is just going to be a repeat of that. As ever, whenever we get chatting, the conversation will, will go off in different directions, I'm sure. And I, I, I kind of wanted Caroline to have her own episode as well. So... Thank you anyway, Caroline, for volunteering or agreeing no, <laughs> to take part you. on Saturday. So that was thank that you. was really lovely. So we'll probably, little bits might creep out about that. Anyway, enough waffle. So Caroline's links. Oh, do you know what? Right, I need to do your bio first and I'll do your links. Right, so I have a bio here. This is Caroline in a nutshell. So Caroline is an artist and educator specializing in hand embroidery and she's based in Yorkshire. She teaches hand embroidery, English paper piecing, that's a mouthful, darning, yeah. patchwork and reverse applique, stitched shibori and eco printing. Uh, she's got a degree, a BA honours in contemporary surface pattern and textiles. And Carol Ann's own practice explores the importance of slow textiles and traditional skills. She has been running a community project at Sunnybank Mills in Farsley, Yorkshire for over two years called Community Cloth at Sunnybank Mills, bringing together ex-mill workers and the local community to stitch and quilt. Oh, that sounds really interesting. I shall be digging around in that one. And yes. she runs workshops in her home in Yorkshire, Sunnybank Mills, Farsley, and Rural Arts, Thirsk, and is available for talks and workshops. So that was actually how I found uh, Carol Ann, I think. There was a couple of reasons for how I found her. She popped up a couple of times. And um, yeah, it was at the Rural Arts Arts Centre in Thirsk where the um, Podcast Social Cloud e Club event was. Right, so that's enough waffling from me. Carol Ann's links are, we've got her website, carolannjallen.com. And then she's very helpfully got the same on Facebook and Instagram. So you'll find her as Carol Ann J. Allen on both of those. And of course, on Carol Ann's episode on Stitchery Stories, we'll have all of those links plus examples of her work for y'all to have a look at too there we are wow i'm going to give myself a gold star because i've actually remembered to do everything before we get started Yay well done me <laughs> <laughs> um right well so there we are so then caroline before we kind of dig deeper into your stitchery story today would you like to share with us what you're working on and what's got you excited Right. Um, well, at the moment, I'm working on a piece of, uh, well, stitch shibori and embroidery. Um, it's in memory of my father who died two years ago. Oh. We recently spread his ashes round a ginkgo tree. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Oh, and, yes. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to do a piece to commemorate, I can't speak properly, <laughs> yeah. Um you know, for, for his memory, really, on that. Yeah. So I'm just yeah. started working on it. So, yeah, yeah. so it's quite good. Um, thing that's got me excited, I went to the Festival of Quilts this year and there was a lot of work with Bahagi, which is a Korean method of quilting and almost like, dare I say, French scenes. It's a very old traditional method. And I bought Sarah Cook's book, which is wonderful. Right. So, so let me just write this name down properly because otherwise I'll forget. Could you know how, yeah. to, how, how do we spell it? It's, it's a funny well, it, sounding word. It could be, oh, Bohagi. I hope yeah. I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> B-O-J-A-G-I. Hang on. B I've written it down wrong now. B-O-J-A-G-I. Yeah. 
A G I. A G I. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Never yeah. heard of that one before. Yeah. Um, ah, well, I'm, I'm, everyone will be looking it up now, won't they? So, I know. And did you say that's a book that you've got? As yes, well? by well, I think it's Sarah. It's S A R A Cook. Um, it's a Batsford book, and it's it's just a really beautiful book. I, I love these books where you can just sort of, you know, the demonstration. There's lots of lovely photography in there, but the techniques of how to, you know, how yeah. to do it. So I just need to experiment really with this technique. Oh, that sounds really fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always good to learn new things. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, it's great, isn't it? And <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, the um, knitting and stitching show is coming up. In fact, actually. Tomorrow, Thursday, you're there, aren't you? Demonstrating. I am. I'm demonstrating in the Artists in Action um, studio, which is run by Art Van Gogh. Yeah. Um, fabulous. And it's their last time at the show. Really? They're, they've got a stand. It's their last time. Well, yes, yeah. So uh, this is a lovely opportunity. Lots of artists, you know, working and people can come and have a chat and you sort of demonstrate different things. There's a lot of artists. So, Mm, I love I love going to the artist in action area. Yes, it's yes. fascinating. But sadly, I'm there going on Sunday, so I won't oh. see you. But I did see you on Saturday, so that's, yes, you that's did. Good. You did. There'll be lots of lovely artists there. <laughs> oh, how exciting! So yeah. yeah, and what I was going to say was when we go to the knitting and stitching show, the book stalls are always quite a magnet, and and you do finish up finding books that you you wouldn't normally see. You know, a lot yes. of these uh, specialist books that we all love. You, you can't find them in, in ordinary quote, bookshops, can you? So, no. Yeah. And, it's, and lots of old books. Well, it is. It's really exciting. There's so much to do and see. So have you actually started with this? But, 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 you, know, you know what I'm talking about. Have you actually got started with it or is it just an idea at the minute? It's an idea uh, at the moment. I've, I've got the book. I've got the fabric. And I'm going <laughs> oh, to give, well, then you're done. I'm going to give myself some time soon. I'm just sort of, um, you know, getting to the end of my workshops. I start them again in February. So, um, yeah, time to do some playing. Ooh, well, that always sounds really fantastic. Right. Well, they're really exciting things. And that's a new technique that um, I certainly haven't heard of before. So, mm. So let's see, everybody else will be diving in trying to find out yes, about yeah. it as well. <laughs> and of course, so are you going to be sharing some like work in progress and ideas and things on your social media for us to all have a good old go at as well? Or are you going to keep it a secret? Um, <laughs> Can you be I, bothered? I <laughs> well, I, I was just kind of going to take a bit of a break from social. <laughs> I'll, I'll share some bits, but not a lot. I, um, yeah, I want yeah. to play at the moment. So Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you know that's that's the thing though isn't it about social media we all know that we need to be sharing things and keeping up to date and even even at the weekend on on Saturday then I was thinking to myself oh maybe I should post me like setting off or and, and do you know what I was just interested in being there enjoying it chatting with you and Mary Ann and my friend Barbara yeah. and just enjoying the thing and, and I, I didn't really do, I didn't do anything and I, I don't think I've even posted much since either because I was waiting for some photos from Barbara and I said, oh, I'll do it on Wednesday, you know. <laughs> so that's that's absolutely fine, isn't it? It just means you've had a good time. You don't have to post everything. No, it's, it's nice no. to see what people are doing, but then obviously you're posting about the new pod, you know, the podcast that we did. So, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. good. I shall be sharing all of that this today, in fact. Yeah. There we are. <laughs> right, okay, so that's a really great start then. I can see that you're dead excited about that. Yes. Now, so how did you actually get interested in embroidery and textile art caroline what's what's your story there oh it's been a long slow <laughs> process um, <laughs> so, Isn't it always? so i'm from a military background traveled a lot as a child went to lots of different schools oh, none of my yeah. family have really done any certainly not sewing uh, yeah. i was a pa in london i worked for the army yeah. uh, but um, sort so, of from so my... no textiles there then at all. In no, all of that lot. No, no, not no. at all. But I always, I always loved art. Always, yeah. always loved art and drawing. But then in my early twenties, I started doing embroidery, and I went to evening classes and evening groups. Uh, I did hard hanger, drawn thread work, so traditional, very yeah. traditional embroidery. Yeah. Um, and then time, time went on. I got married, had two daughters, and when they were a bit older, I thought, you know, they it was sort of time I wanted to do something for myself. So yeah, I did an yeah. access course in, uh, in Bradford mm. and uh, that was like a part-time access course. Yeah, yeah. And then that led on to me being able to do a degree because I'd never done a degree before. 
Um, so this was that was really exciting. It was at Bradford School of Art. And um, it was the contemporary surface pattern. So you did printing, weaving, knit and embroidery. And I specialised in embroidery and print. Right. Um, that sounds a really interesting course anyway. Oh, oh I'd, yeah. I'd love, to, I'd love to do something like oh, that. Oh, Hannah Lamb was my embroidery tutor there. Right. Um, it, was a, it was an amazing facility. Uh, I also did typography book binding there as well. Mm. Um yeah, it was it was an amazing it's an amazing college. It's got a lot of you know, a lot of brilliant facilities. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so then that kind of after that then my embroidery changed it. I wanted it to become sort of freer rather than you know, I love traditional embroidery, but it's quite nice to change the way you think really and yes. just free up on things. Right, okay. So you've taken that kind of background interest, you did something about it. And you've you've got your degree, and then so how? What's been the path there for to taking that degree and then doing your own thing? You know, running it as a business. Um, well, actually, after my degree, I did I did work for a knitting company for six years. Ah, right. Um, so I, mean, I was very lucky that I, I got a job straight away in yeah. in the textile industry, and that was a, a knitting company locally in Guiseley, which is Peter Pan Walls, uh, Wendy, who are very, and uh, Erica yes, Knight. Yes, yes. So I, I worked for them for six years. I did the shade book, so it was all digital. Yeah, and I, yeah. I um, did all the magazine editorials for all the magazines, so Knit Now, Simply Crochet, ev- every one. So, so I used oh, to go to all the shows to meet yeah. all the magazines. So for a while, my work was kind of on a bit of a back burner because I was busy at work. And, yeah, yeah. Um, I still did bits and bobs, but you know what it's like when you're busy, you've got children. and Yeah, you get 10 minutes and you're too tired, aren't you? Yes, yeah. But then after six years, well, what also combined was that with my, my father being ill and he mm. was taken ill abroad. So anyway, to cut a long story short, I decided to leave the knitting company. And you needed a change in life. I needed a change. But yeah. then <laughs> I was contacted by my lovely friend, Dion Swift, yeah, who was running the uh, Military Wives Project Stitched Together. Wow. So um, I went on to, you know, to work with them for a year, a second artist on that project. That fitted in actually quite well then. You know, sometimes we do things, don't we? And we think, oh, I'm going to pack my job in. I've I've done it myself. And then you wonder, am I I doing, is this the right thing to do? Should I do it? Should I not do it? Uh, Stuff it, I'm going to do it. And then something else comes up straight away. I'm a great believer in this. I've seen it. Yeah, I'm self-employed for 10 years now. And I can almost guarantee that if a potential client comes along and you just think, no, there's just something about this person. I don't really, I don't really want to do that work. I don't really, you know, because as much as they think they're interviewing me, actually, it's the other way around. Yes, yeah, <laughs> it's my choice yeah. whether I work with yes. these people or not. Yeah. And you can guarantee if you just think to yourself, actually, no, this project's not right for me. A day later, it might be a week later, something actually far better comes along. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yes. Always. So um, it, it can be really nerve wracking and nail biting. You think, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Yeah. Have faith in yourself and something better always comes along. So there we are. You see, you freed yourself up to do that lovely project. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, yeah. So uh, do you want to hear about the project? Um, um, yes, just have a, a quick talk. Now, uh, we'll, we'll just say um, Dion, Dion Swift, she was uh, an early guest and Dion spoke. Uh, about her involvement with the the Mill Two Rives project, but I think it'd be nice to hear from Caroline as well from her perspective too. Yes, so so you know I was only involved for a year. Obviously, Dion yeah. was involved for a long time. It was it was I have to say it was an amazing project. Uh, we worked across Catrick Garrison, Topcliff, and Dishforth. Yeah, and really, we, you know, the key aims of it was to give participants transferable skills, increase their confidence and self esteem, and just links to the local community. So, it was a weekly meeting where we ran workshops. Uh, not it was twice a month. So yeah, yeah. We, we did so much with them. We did wow. um, you know printing, machine embroidery, hand embroidery, you name it, we did it. And and there'd be sometimes you know, where somebody say, oh, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. And oh, they'd, yeah. they'd, you know, get in a bit of a tither, but, you know, you just say, right, let's sit down, have a cup of tea. All we're going to do is this little running stitch or something, 
you know, something quite small. And then they'd say, actually, I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's the joy of textiles, isn't it? And then yes. anything to do with crafts and textiles, it's you can do it. Just don't always think you have to be, you know, at the uh, Royal School of Needlework. It, you that, can do something that pleases you and that's that, good for you. That is so true because I think people overwhelm themselves by looking yes. at something and then just go, oh, I'll, we hear it all the time, especially at the shows. Oh, I'll never be able to do that. Well, yes, you yeah. will. Or yeah. it's like, oh, I, I won't ever be able to do that. Well, actually, talking to somebody who's spent 15 years doing it, well, actually, it's taken a long – sometimes skills do take a long time to get to that yes, kind of do. level of perfection. Yes. But most of the things that we're doing, we, we don't – we don't need to let perfectionism no. get, in, get in our way and you put no. the needle in and take it out and put it in yeah. and take it out and you can make yeah. you know you can make things they wanted to make things for their children oh, lovely. or yeah. do little craft markets but I have to say it was uh, and from the point of view of you know sometimes they do feel very isolated that meeting mm. that was every week and the coming together and you know what it's like yeah. put the kettle on yeah. you get some biscuits out yeah. and you can you know uh, it's fantastic isn't it it gives such a good vehicle for people to be able to chat as well yes Sometimes, which is important it, it is um previous guests I, I forget who at the moment said um they were involved with some supporting uh, grieving grieving ladies and yeah. and, she, and she said at, at first people would just sit in silence but then and they all had lots of painful things going on in their head Mm-hmm. But as their hands were busy and you're looking at your hands, then people started to talk. They didn't have to look at each other. Somehow by not looking at each other, you could people could just kind of start expressing themselves and expressing some of these painful emotions. Yes. And, and so that worked really well. So, yeah, actually, sometimes it, it, it is just that your hands are busy, your eyes are busy, so let your brain and mouth do something else as well. Yes, so, yeah. yeah you, you, you must have seen that because, I mean, I'm sure that a lot of these young ladies with, you know, families stuck on their own in places that they've never been to before. Yeah, no, you know, not near family. It must be very difficult. Yes, I, yes. I can remember my mum, you know, being feeling very isolated and it was hard work. My father was away a lot and she had three children and no yeah. family and... Yeah, yeah, but so you'd have had a lot of empathy there as well with them. Yeah, so you were the you were the child of a military yes, wife. Yes, <laughs> I am. Yes, <laughs> yes, but but also uh, two of the groups have continued doing um, you know the running the groups. Unfortunately, there's not a crash anymore because there's no you know more no funding. funding yeah. But you know, we did say to them, why not set up your own crash and then just take it in turns? But yeah. I'd, I suppose with people moving a lot, mm. it didn't happen. But yeah, yeah, but they're still continuing, which is really good. You know, we can see what they're doing on the Facebook page, and it's fantastic what they're doing. Oh, how lovely! And yeah. so that's really then been. And you were talking there about running the project with <clears throat> with the mill workers. So have yes. you kind of fitted into that? Obviously, community work is something that you enjoy doing. Yes, I do. Well, at the the pro- I love Sunnybank Mills. It's such a fantastic space and there's a lovely art gallery there and artist studios. But also there's an amazing archive and a lot of people in the village love the fact that the mill, although it ceased weaving, yeah. it, it's it's been brought back to life in another way. Not just so, housing. No, no, yeah, absolutely yeah. not. A lot of people work there. The, yeah. the archive is amazing. Oh, wow. Um, so if people want to research, I'd go look on Sunnybank's website. It's fantastic. But right. I set up the quilt thing really to get people who maybe came into the gallery or the cafe to just sit and either stitch their house, because a lot of them live in the village and it's yeah. a very pretty village, or j- just sit and talk and tell stories about the mill. So um, we've managed now to get one, the, the front cover, so to speak, yeah. of the houses and Sunnybank in the middle. Um, so of now, um, next year, I'm hoping to get together with a few more people and actually finish it and make it into a, a quilt that can, you know, just be in the, in the gallery. Because there's lots yeah. of lovely sofas you can sit on. So the quilt will be laid on one of the sofas. Yeah. Oh, sounds but, uh, really wonderful. Oh, it's very, yeah. yeah, very interesting. And and people there would say, oh, I can't do it. And I'd mm. say, just do a little drawing, but yeah. then somebody else would embroider it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so that's nice, isn't it? People it were is. doing different things and finishing pictures. Um, so, yeah, really, really good project. 
Yeah, oh, I, I, yeah, I can I can feel your enthusiasm and your love for for doing that as well. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, that's really super. So, in terms of then inspirations, uh, you kind of mentioned obviously people and, and and groups really in community work obviously inspires you. Have you got any other inspirations, Carol Ann? Um, I think anything Japanese. I, I need to go there, really. Um, <laughs> oh, it's I a love, fascinating place. <laughs> oh, I know. I love anything to do with like the borrow, you know, all the recycled fabrics, but although they were all work clothes that had to yeah. be mended, uh, anything to do with shibori. I love um, the embroiderer Junko Oki. Um, it's very, her freedom in her stitch is amazing. And actually, there's a new exhibition uh, going to be at the v in February, which is Kimono to Catwalk. Oh. Um, I love the v It's such a <laughs> oh, wonderful fabulous. place to go to. So, But I'd say anything that is to do with mending or recycling or indigo. Yeah, I, I love a bit of darning. <laughs> you always get excited with darning i think you get some really lovely effects though as well i, I know in our embroiderers guild group last year yeah cranky yeah last year we did some kogin so it's like counted patterns yes, um, yeah. and and that really enjoyed doing that and that was really nice to kind of sit there and count your lines and do your straight stitches and that was really therapeutic and i quite i quite enjoyed doing that because i yeah. don't really do very much of that kind of work so that yeah. was that was really, really nice to have a go at that. Yeah. So that obviously inspirations are almost techniques there, really. So we've talked about some techniques. What is it about the indigo? Because I've seen quite a lot of your pieces where you've done the, the, the indigo dyeing and the shibori. That always comes out lovely, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I like I like the fact that you can have a piece of fabric and you can do a running stitch in it and, and make an amazing design or pattern. Yeah. Uh, and, you you know, so you do a lovely running stitch, you pull it, you know, you draw the threads and then you dye it. And then when, when you start undoing it, A, it's fabulous because the fabric's green and then it turns blue. And, Does it? Oh, I've oh, never yeah, tried, yeah. I've never tried yeah. doing that. Oh, right. It's like, it's just magic. So Ooh. when you start undoing the stitching, so, I mean, the stitching takes a long time. It's yeah. a very slow process, but it's, you know, it's just lovely when you undo the stitching and you think, oh, you know, what have I got here? And, um, and I know when I'm running workshops, people they say, oh, this is going to take a long time. But then when they start unpicking it, they, yeah. they love it. Yeah. And they can understand why I love it so much. It's that lovely methodical process. And, and when the Japanese did it a very long time ago, it would have been, you know, perfectly stitched all the same. Yeah. I'm a bit more free, free-handed than yeah. that. But you can, un- you can just see... When you look at the cloth, you can see where the stitches are and and how it's all worked. I just I just love it. It's, it's yeah, really it, it, lovely. It must process. be a real surprise. So yes. I think the whole process does sound fabulous. You say you're sitting there, you can almost think about other things, can't you? When you've got you you're doing your you're not trying to work out how to do this complicated knot or this fancy stitch. Your needle's going in and out and in and out. You know where you're going with it. And yeah. then you've got the surprise of what it's actually going to look like when you've finished that. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just have to be a bit careful where you're doing your pulling and your threads and see, so you, mm. you know, how to work out the pattern. But, um, yes, yeah. yeah, no, it is. It's lovely. It's a really good method. So, Yeah. Right, well, I'm um, looking forward to getting some um, ideas and inspiration from you. Sh- share a couple of your pieces so yes, we can all yeah. have a look as well. Brilliant. Oh, hiya. Do you know what? I'm just editing today's chat and I've had a brainwave. This episode is my last artist chat of 2019. However, I really would love to do a special, you know, one of those year end Christmas episodes to go out uh, n- next Wednesday, Wednesday, the 18th of December. But I need your help. I would really love to feature your stitchery stories, your highlights, your enjoyment of textile art and embroidery. Really, really love for you to share your stories with me. And therefore, it's my intention to make up an episode featuring all of you lovely listeners and the enjoyment with your embroidery and textile art from 2019. So there's two ways you can do this. You can email your story. Email me at hello at stitcherystories.com. And then I've got another alternative using a 
online app where you can record your own message and then I can edit those and insert them in the episode so people can hear your message in your voice, which I think would be lovely. So there's a thing called SpeakPipe. So you can visit speakpipe.com, S-P-E-A-K-P-I-P-E.com forward slash voice recorder. And it's a free voice recorder. It works on a web browser and it works on all devices in from a web browser. So you go to speakpipe.com forward slash voice recorder and then it's a simple screen. It says, are you ready? Is your microphone ready? And then click the big green button, start recording and tell me your story. A couple of minutes, a minute. Once you've finished, press stop. You can listen to what you've recorded. You can re-record it if you want. And then there's the option to save it. It's, it says save on the SpeakPipe server. So it saves it on their server. And that gives you a link. You can copy that link and email the link to me. So send me an email. Hello at stitchwithstories.com. Say hi, Sue. Here's my SpeakPipe recording. Include the link and then I will be able to put that into the episode. So there we are. That's your challenge. I really, really, really would love you to do that. Do it via email or do it via SpeakPipe. Either way would be brilliant. And I will also put hopefully a SpeakPipe button on the Stitchery Stories website as well for you. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what we can put together for next week. If you can send me your emails and voice messages by Monday the 16th of December. That gives me a a day or so to have a fiddle around and see how I can bring it all together into an interesting episode for you all. Of course, whether you are leaving me a email message that I will read out or you're leaving a speak pipe message for me to edit and play, then please remember to include your name. If you have a website, then please leave your website name and then I can give you a shout out as well and then people go and check out your work and your website so of course you'll get a shout out as well so I'm looking forward to sharing your stories and sharing your website URLs and so it's another opportunity for people to find out what you've been getting up to and to share your highlight for 2019. So thanks a lot and I'll get back to Caroline. So, so therefore, in terms of what you've achieved with or what you've done with your textile art, your embroidery journey so far, have, have you got any high points that you want to highlight, Caroline? Um, I think from a poor personal point of view of how I've gone forward, being, yeah. being part of the Military Wives Project with Dion, and Dion um, was mentored me during the project, you know, it, it really taught me a lot about, A, about people, mm. about how to run workshops. And I don't mean run as, yeah. you know, how to deal with just everything to do with um, delivering workshops that benefit the person who's actually attending them. Yeah. I, I was just, everything about that project was really personal to me. Mm. It gave mm. me a lot of confidence um, and it enabled me to go on as a textile artist and tutor, really, a lot further. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I, f- I feel really proud to have been part of it. And the, I, the exhibition I'm not surprised. at I'm the surprised. end of it um, was at the Greenhouse Museum. And then John and I took the exhibition to various craft shows. And that was lovely, meeting people, all the people we met who'd been in the military or understood they'd been naval wives or RAF wives. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, yes. I think it was just it was just very, very personal Um but a, I'd say a privilege, really, to be mm. part of that and, and to meet all those lovely ladies and one husband <laughs> um, who was <laughs> very creative. Man, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was fantastic. So, yeah, so I, I'd say that has really changed the way I think about things and the way forward for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, not surprised. And yeah, and as, as we just mentioned before, the timing of that in terms of where you were going with your personal development was just perfect wasn't it it really yes. was perfect yeah. and your background and yes I can understand that I know what you mean when you said you learned a lot in terms of dealing with people dealing with 
how people go on. As you say, then people go, oh, I'm st- oh, I don't know what to do. I can't do that. All those sorts of things. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really satisfying, isn't it, to be able to guide people from that point of you know, negativity really and overwhelm to them being able yes. to create something that was exhibited i think that's yes. just wonderful yeah. yeah well done really important now then i think we've talked when we've been you just kind of alluded to it so i just want to dig into it as we head towards the the end of our chat yeah you mentioned about taking some time off so i quite often ask people about different artists how they how you organize your creative time and I think that idea of taking some time off to be creative is a very interesting one we don't do it enough in life because of various you know reasons it's not just because we don't want to it's quite often because we can't free ourselves up so do you want to just chat a bit about that Caroline really about this idea of taking time out for yourself and how you you know what your creativity plans are in that period yeah um, well, I, I sort of mentioned about my father for the past three years yeah. uh, with my sister. I've been looking after both my parents as well as working workshops uh, and daughters. Yeah, yeah. They've, they've both passed away now. And yeah. I think personally, it's taken a toll on me. Um, Undoubtedly, of course it does. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And creatively, mm. creatively, it's really taken a, a toll because um, I haven't had the spare time for development Anyway, so I've decided. I've decided my workshops are finished now for the year, and they start again in February. Right. Yes. So I've just decided I'm going to take a couple of months um, just to play, yeah, just yeah. to start drawing and stitching. I, I went to do some embroidery the other day, and I'd forgotten how to do the <laughs> stitch. And I thought this is ridiculous, but you do unless oh, yeah, I know you get where, rusty. I know where you're going with that one. Yeah, yeah you, you get yeah. really rusty. Mm-hmm. Even and when you're teaching, it's completely different to actually doing things for yourself. Yes. So yes. I am. I am going to kind of take some time, and I've. Um, I have a friend, Fiona Wilson, who's a very good mentor as well. Um, and I've had some mentoring with her and it's you know she's she's very good at saying you know people don't take time Mm. you need creatively to take some time go draw go for a walk go to an art gallery and we don't do it do we we we're so busy looking after our family or whoever or working yeah yeah sometimes it's only 20 minutes a day just go for a walk get your shoes on and you know uh, and I, I've I've neglected that for a long time. So that's what I want to do for a couple of months. I just want to go out, take photos, go for a walk, uh, talk to people, or draw, you know, just do something for me. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, that then I think I'll feel refreshed and just um, it's self development, isn't it? It's very important. It's important for your mental health. It's important for your development as an artist and as a person. It, it, it and tr- and who you're teaching, <laughs> you know what the workshops you're delivering, everything. It's yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I'm I'm going to take a little bit of time. Um, so I might not post as many things on social media or whatever, but I'll be back. You know, if people want to know anything, I've got my website for my newsletter, and I'll start everything again in February. But, yeah, um, yeah. Oh, the yeah. time will zoom past, won't it? As well, though, yes. sadly. So, but yeah. I, I know what you mean about just feeling, oof, yeah, tired mentally, creatively. Yes. Just your brain just doesn't function properly anymore. And I mean, for me. Uh, I mean, I do go running early on in the morning, but even the days when I've been running, I'll still then go and go for a walk. And I really do make myself. In fact, my electronic diary pops up at 12 o'clock to remind me to go and have a walk, go and have some lunch, oh, and go and have I a need walk. To do that, don't I? <laughs> every day I, I look that. at my plan. Yeah, every day I look at my plan <laughs> and I've got an hour blocked out every yeah. day, 12 till 1, go, lunch and a walk. And sometimes yes. it might be one o'clock before I go for my walk or it might yeah. be half past 11. It, you know, if it's think, right, if I don't get out now, it's going to throw it down like it is today. Then, so, you know, I, I, I don't rigidly oh, 12 o'clock and go for my walk, but yeah. it's there to remind me today and yeah. every day you've got to get off your backside, get out of your office, get away yes. from the screen. And just go yeah. and get blown around by the wind and the rain. Yeah, and, which and, is you know, so good for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it is, you know, and I'll just come back. And if I'm 
stuck about something or thinking about how to do something or just getting ideas or I've been doing a lot of video editing as well at the moment I've been creating a lot of online courses Fabulous. and it's just like just get away from the damn computer and just go yeah. out um yeah. so so yeah top marks on you and there have been times where I've taken time for myself you know when you and before I had children I I, I took time of uh, change jobs or when I just said right I've had enough and I just packed in a very very well paying job I just stopped I, thought, I can't do this anymore yeah it's a brave decision but a good one <laughs> it, it it is it, it certainly is and so anybody kind of thinking if you've got these ideas going through your head and and feel as if you really would like to take some time then yeah it's brave and as you say you've spent last three years looking after parents and you have kids and there's always something but I think to take that brave step and make a change because it's our life. We only have it once, you know. Yes. Yeah. So I, I think that's really, really brilliant, brilliant, brave step. And I'm sure we'll all be looking forward to a, a, a refreshed and playful Carol Ann so. <laughs> when we start off in February. Oh, yeah. dear. Fabulous. Right then. So uh, normally I talk about future plans and projects, but obviously for the next couple of months, your plan is to not have plans and projects, which is yes, great. Yeah. yeah. Have you got things? You said your workshop start again in February. Have you got a, a schedule, or have you got any major things penciled in for next um, year that people can take a take, you know keep their eye out for you? Yeah, I'm doing I'm uh, doing a workshop for 2021 in Scunthorpe. Ooh. I think that's February. I've got some in rural arts, and um, next summer I'm doing uh, some a summer camp or well, summer school for the Embroiderers Guild in Sterling. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I've got, I've actually got quite a few things yeah. booked next year, which is really exciting. And, you know, it's nice to go out and meet different people in different areas. So, yeah, but it'll all be, I'll put it all on my website and then I don't send out a lot of newsletters, but I just, um, you know, I don't want to bombard anybody. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I usually just try update people every few months. So, yeah, yeah so if anybody wants to, sign up that's good please yes p- please do because there's nothing more annoying than finding out on the monday that you've just missed this fabulous workshop <laughs> that's, yeah, re- that's really gutting that isn't it <laughs> yes. oh, look, we have this fabulous workshop with caroline oh i wish i could have gone i wish i've known <laughs> about it so yeah i know it's that fine line between feeling like uh, i'm telling people about what i'm doing but actually people do want to know what you're doing because they want yeah, to join in yeah, <laughs> yes yeah. <laughs> And and if we don't market our business, then we'll 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 starve to death, and that won't serve anybody. That's so, not good. No. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how I try and convince myself to do it. So I know what you mean. Yeah. Right. Well, do you know, as as ever, our time has zoomed past. Wow. I've really really enjoyed speaking with you today, Caroline. Thank uh, you I, so I love much. Your story, and I love the way in which you've come into this in you know later life, despite family and and all the rest of it. And yes. You, yeah. You, you're still there enthusiastic and, and enjoying what you're doing so you know I just think that's brilliant and if anybody takes inspiration of that, out of that then that's that's what we do this far as well you know to help and inspire anybody else in that same situation so I'm, I'm sure you've done that today very much so thank, thank you, you very thank much. you for inviting me it's, it's, it's a pleasure I, I, <laughs> I love doing this this is this is my hobby do you know I spend more time talking about embroidery than I spend doing it these days but never mind <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> oh, dear me. Right, Caroline, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, then please join the Stitchery Stories fan club so you can get an email when a new episode is released. It's a quick and easy way of listening and of keeping up with any news and information around this podcast. Please visit stitcherystories.com. Of course, you can listen to Stitchery Stories on plenty of podcast apps at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and plenty more besides. You can also ask your smart speaker to play Stitchery Stories podcast too. But wherever you listen, why not leave us a rating and a review to encourage other people to listen too. I very much appreciate you taking the time to do that for me. So that is the end of our Stitchery Story for today. Keep stitching... Keep smiling and keep creating your very own stitchery stories.